Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Tall Dragon here. And before we get into today's video, there's something I'd like to say. I'd like to let you all know that we have a merch store. Some of the items in it are only available for a limited amount of time. So if you're interested, go into the description and check it out. Each purchase helps us make more content. Secondly, if this video hits 500 likes by the end of the week, we will continue this what if. Thirdly, if you didn't know, only 41.3% of you guys are subscribed to us. So please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. The man formerly known as Stain kept a watchful eye on All Might's son. His sole purpose in life? Assuring the health and future or well-being of the boy. The man had seen the press conferences and laid witness to All Might's soul laid bare. His hero wanted him dead, and why wouldn't he? Not only was the man responsible for destroying a promising hero, he also destroyed what his hero no doubt spent years trying to protect. If these men hadn't offered him their assistance, he would have offered All Might his head. This was a second chance, but not without strings. The nameless man wasn't an unlettered novice. His barbarous life granted him the wisdom of the cold world he inhabited. The excitement on the plump face of that so-called doctor made his skin crawl with disgust. That wasn't a doctor. He was a fat nugget of a man who relished in the pain of others. This was evident by the way the man treated Izuku Midoriya. He would have slain the man if he didn't need him. The son of All Might floated in an ill mucus colored translucent substance, unconscious with various tubes running into him. The sight of it caused a swell of lament and self-loathing to spawn in his heart. The nameless man placed a hand on the tank, closing his eyes. When he opened them, they were filled with the fierce fanaticism that were usually behind the red pit. He grit his teeth and clenched his fist. He spoke. As soon as you get your new arm, I'm taking you where you belong. You have my word, he promised the boy. All that he had left in life was his final mission. His soul couldn't rest unless he succeeded. The man prayed that when all was said and done, that this boy could be a hero once more. Heroes, true heroes, who illuminated the world in the light of their hope, were rare and now needed more than ever. The nameless man begged that Deku could one day be the hope for the next generation, like All Might was for his. Elsewhere, the good doctor was busy having a conversation with his master. The man's twisted mind birthed deprived machinations each second he thought of Deku. He'd never had the opportunity to enhance a user of One For All. It was a golden opportunity for him to test the quirk, perhaps reverse engineer it. All the doctor needed was the go-ahead from his master. Well, old friend, what is his condition? His body is taking to the chemical solution well. He's stable enough to undergo the process. The only issue is that stain character. He won't leave me to my work in peace. All for one chuckled at his friend's frustration. There wasn't much the doctor wasn't allowed to do. The sky had been the limit when it came to working for all for one. It was only when taking a manner personally that the doctor was denied by his master. I feel a bout of nostalgia coming over me, my friend. Do you remember when we first met? You were working on that monstrosity. What was its name? All for one inquired, grinning like a madman. Ah, you mean Starfish, our first collaboration. A shame it turned out so sloppy. You're too hard on yourself, Doctor. From where I sit, it was quite the success. I've picked out two quirks for All Might's former apprentice. I want you to craft an arm from Starfish onto him. Oh, and do try to have him ready for Tomura's next attack. The Doctor's pleased disposition left him. Starfish was the failed prototype to the later success that was Gigantomachia. This gnome possessed an advanced radial nervous system, eliminating the need for a centralized brain. It granted each part of the gnome's body its own independence. Unfortunately for the doctor, this was also its weakness. The limbs infamously self-cannibalized each other, deconstructing and reconstructing itself. It was a never-ending cycle of self-destruction. Please, master, I beg you to reconsider. Fortuity has given us the chance to craft something truly magnificent. With that boy's body still fresh with the ambers of one for all? The Nomu I could craft might succeed even my greatest achievements. Why must we waste that potential to achieve a meaningless victory? Calmly, All for One brought his hands together. Many others had died for much less. Because I've learned that when given the opportunity, it's preferable to remove the arm instead of simply twisting it. An ironic saying, I suppose, but my point still stands. A new successor has been chosen. What better way to discourage them than by showing them what they're in for? If you sedate the arm, the boy should last long enough to kill a few of his friends before being consumed. The resulting cacophony should be enough for most to pull their children out of UA. After all, it can happen to All Might's son. It could happen to anyone. All for one, as well as the doctor, knew that the boy wasn't Toshinori's child. But it didn't matter. What did matter was what the public thought. If they thought the poor boy was All Might's offspring, why dispel that convenient veil of ignorance? The doctor saw the logic in his master's plan. Once attached, Starfish would immediately connect to the child's central nervous system. From there, it would drive the child to go on a rampage, killing anyone he came into contact with. While it was certainly an entertaining thought to maintain, it still felt wasteful from the doctor's perspective. Nevertheless, he would do as told, even if it meant losing such a promising subject. 
Meanwhile, a heavy cloud hung over the heads of Class 1A. Their world was shaken by the mutilation and abduction of one of their own. Nearly two weeks had passed since their friend and classmate was taken. The typically jovial vigor the class usually radiated was replaced by a wistful sense of loss. When they learned that Izuku was taken, there was anger, tears, and grief, as none of them could imagine anything pleasant to come of this. At this very moment, he could be screaming out for them, and there was nothing they could do about it. No one said it aloud, but they all blamed the happenstance on a combination of Deku's hero complex and Ida's stupidity. This caused a rift to form between the class and Ida. Uraraka unintentionally began to ignore Ida's presence. Bakugo glared constantly at him, while others like Momo interacted with him passively. Tenya didn't complain. The head of blue felt it was deserved. It was only rational. He chose to seek revenge, and the price paid was his friend, and the new scar that marked him as a failure. It itched whenever he thought of his best friend, which for Ida was constantly. Tenya, along with many others, were surprised that he was allowed to remain in the hero chorus. His saving grace was All Might himself. When the young man asked the symbol of peace why, all he got was, He believes in you, from the older man. Afterwards, All Might avoided all interactions with Ida as well. The young man felt alone, but in his loneliness found perseverance. Midoriya had always been the type to take naturally to heroism. Without asking or hesitation, his friend would always put his life on the line for others. So if Izuku's time as a hero was over, the responsibility to save all the lives his friend would have in his career were his responsibility. The speedster swore from this moment forward to do the hero work his friend would have. No distractions, no excuses or exceptions. Ida's mind and body would stand as the personification of his brothers in Izuku's heroic heart. The classes of 1A and 1B were taken to a training camp to help improve their skills and sharpen their wit. So far, none of the classes were as driven as Class 1A. Each had their own reasons, but at the core of it, they were being pushed by the loss of their classmate and the fear of being next. The students surprised their mentors with their resolve and a single-minded focus. Unbeknownst to the teachers, some were training for a purpose. Members of Class 1A were planning a rescue mission. Amongst the group, Kirishima, Momo, Todoroki, Bakugo, and Uraraka were having secret meetings. They didn't know where Deku was, but when they had enough information, they'd act with or without the heroes. Before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now, in case you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called We the Celestial Naruto What If. We the Celestial Naruto What If mainly focuses on our Naruto What If series. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. In his lab, the doctor pouted in dissatisfaction. He was miserable. After the complex microsurgical procedure, he put the boy back into the tank. The jet black limb morphed to fit the size of the teen's body. Three days wasn't enough for the teen to properly stabilize, even if a piece of starfish weren't attached to the boy. He was sure the strain from the multiple operations and quirk transference would kill him. Sadly, the doctor rubbed the tank, falling into hysteric. I had such high hopes for you. A pity this botched work is the best you'll get. You could have been so much more. But alas, Master desires to have you snuffed out. You will always be one of my children. His piece said he allowed Stain to re-enter the room. The killer rushed into the lab, studying the tank. He examined the floating form of a peacefully sleeping Izuku. The masked man had hundreds of questions, but one question crept to the top. How is he? He's stable. And his condition? Poor. He's unstable and will die if that arm isn't removed. The strain of the operation and quirk transfer took a heavy toll on him. He has at most three hours before he expires, but he will obey the first order he's given, the doctor announced with an air of sorrow. The sadistic man turned, looking away from his experiment, causing him to miss the newly transplanted arm clenching its fist. What? You traitors! I knew I shouldn't have trusted you! The hero killer charged forward, sword in hand, posed to slice the doctor in two. As he did, a sludge-like substance gushed from his throat. We kept our word. He has a more sustainable power under his control now than he did when he fought you. I'm only sorry we didn't have more time together. The man formerly known as Stain fought against the slime, gripped his katana and smashed open the glass. One of his hands took hold of Deku and the two were sent away to an unknown location as the scientists raved in panic. The man staggered for a moment before finding his footing. He along with Midoriya were on a cliffside overlooking a burning forest. The teen was still unconscious but slowly coming too. He frantically put Deku on his back, just in time to save the boy from being impaled. Well, look who finally showed up. About time, I was just starting to get bored. A muscular figure carrying a teenager in one hand and a small child in the other. He threw the teenager to the ground in a brutal display of power. The youth had red spiky hair and sharp teeth. The young hero barely clung to consciousness. What kind of hero has such a lame quirk? Hardening? Pfft, that's so lame. Made a good punching bag, though. Let me take care of this, then we can start. Besides the cocky villain, another dressed as a gimp hovered midair. 
kept suspended by his sharp, elongated teeth, one of which had nearly killed Midoriya. Outnumbered and encumbered from carrying a teenager, the once hero killer readied his blade. Bolting forward, he weaved through the toothy blades of the gimp and slashed through the thigh of the blonde villain. Drawing blood, he licked his blood, paralyzing the villain. Taking a note from Deku's book, he leapt forward, catching the young child before he could hit the ground. If they sent you to kill me, your boss is a bigger fool than I thought. You're nothing but dead men. Stain declared, more than happy to indulge in the madness of combat. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor, or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested, and hit that like button if you like the video. Until next time, peace out mortals. Have a fantastic day.